Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you the story as proudly we hail the United States Army. The dictionary defines a cat as a carnivorous quadruped of the family Felidae. But it could be that the people who write dictionaries are on the square side, because a cat is also something else. Something, or we should say someone, like Private Alvin Price, who is the hero of today's story titled, The Coolest Cat. Our story begins in just a moment, but first, here's a tip for you high school graduates. Something to think about. When you're making plans for your future, look into the future our United States Army can offer you. Do you want real technical training? For instance, our modern United States Army runs the greatest technical schools in the world. You can get this kind of training under the Army's Reserved for You training program. And here's the way to do it. First, after you've received your high school diploma, you apply for the course of your choice at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. There are more than 150 courses to choose from. Then, if your application is approved, you enlist and start the basic training all good soldiers must have. Then you're all set for some of the world's best schooling. Ask about it at your United States Army recruiting station today. And now the first act curtain of your proudly we hail production, The Coolest Cat. bothering me. All it's doing is driving spikes through my skull. It's rubbing sandpaper down my oh, backbone. Man. It's dipping my nerves in sulfuric acid. I'm going out of my mind, that's all. Sorry, Sarge, I'll turn it off. Rice, I've been a platoon sergeant in this army for 10 years. I never pull my rank on anybody. But soldier, you have to be straightened out. You share this barracks with 28 other men. You have a right in your off-duty time to play your phonograph. Moderation, soldier. That's the key word. Quietly. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Sarge, yeah. But when you dig something that comes on the most like this, you just flip. You bring it up, man. You just gotta fly with it. That thing plays low or out of the barracks it goes, understood? Yeah, Sarge. <laughs> All the squads loaded up. Squad leaders, check that all spare parts are in the trailers. When we report to the range, draw 500 rounds of ammo for each gun. And gunners, check the belts. Make sure you pull out all the tracer rounds. Rest. Good morning, Sergeant Stewart. Morning, sir. Your platoon ready to leave for the firing range? Yes, sir, just waiting for your inspection. Now, how is this man, Price? Uh, seems like a bright enough fellow, sir. I granted his request, you know. Request, sir? Well, didn't you know about it, Stuart? He said he had your permission to speak to me. Oh, well, I didn't ask him what for. It had to do with bringing over some of his personal property from the States, didn't it, sir? May I ask what, sir? Why, his phonograph records, of course. Oh, no, I mean, sir... Well, he's got plenty of records now. Oh, that's only the smallest part of his collection. Do you know he has almost 5,000 records? Yeah, yeah, it figures. 5,000 records, sir. Or was it eight? Or nine? Well, uh, Price tells me he has the finest and most complete collection of authentic jazz records in the world. And he's bringing them over here, sir? As he put it, uh, as some cats get permission to bring their wives over, all I want is some records. <laughs> Bolts back, blocks in. 
Exercise is finished, sir. A good overall showing, Sergeant. A nice going, Price. Oh, thank you, sir. I guess I just got rhythm, that's all. Uh, rhythm? Yeah, man. That's how Sergeant Stewart taught us. It's all rhythm. I dig rhythm, sir. Well, it's, uh, it's like taking a drum solo, Sarge. Yeah, how's that, Price? Well, it's like you set up your own beat, sir. On the down beat, you press the trigger. On the up beat, you get the burst. Press the trigger, get the burst. Press the trigger, get the burst. Nothing to it, sir. Tonight, I gotta write a letter to some of the cats in KC. Man, they ought to hear me take a chorus on that 30 caliber chopper. Uh, Sergeant, it's somewhat unorthodox, but you must admit he produces results with it. Keep up the good work, Price. Solid, man. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, Price. What's this I hear about you bringing your whole record collection over here? Oh, yes, Sarge. That, well, the captain said go, man. Go, man, huh? The question is, where? So here I am, 15 years in the service, six stripes on my arm, well set in my career, and into my life bursts a character, or if I may use his term, a cat named Alvin Price. What can I do about him? It was obvious to everyone from his own buddies in the squad all the way up to the colonel at regiment that here was easily the smartest soldier in the outfit. And that music of his... <laughs> it was absolutely nothing and no one in jazz he couldn't talk about all day and would if you let him. You couldn't mention anybody who ever played in any jazz orchestra anywhere in the world without getting something from Alvin. About a week of this. And one night, it was Friday right after Chow, Price came up to me. Hey, Sarge, uh, you want to step in the day room for a minute? What's up, Price? I got to be crazy. Uh, no argument from me on that. No, 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 wait a minute. Look, uh, when I say when I say I can dig a record without reading the label and tell you who's playing on it, I ain't kidding. A cat identifies himself to me the way he plays his instrument, the way he blows. I can tell. I can always tell. So what's the point? You got to do something for me, Sarge. And please don't say no. Huh? Price, tell me what. You just got to do it. First, you got to dig this record. It's just maybe 30 seconds on the record. Right, I promised my wife we'd go to the show tonight. Well, you could call her up and tell her you can't go. What? This record was made by a group in uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia, 1939. On it, there's some piano by a guy named uh, Heinrich Hoffmann. He was one of the best European jazz piano players. Some, some guys rate him number one. In my book, he's about three, maybe four. But he's good enough, you know. Here's where he takes his solo. It's just maybe, maybe 20 seconds. Now, please, just dig this, huh? Price, I never heard of Heinrich Hoffman, and Sarge, I couldn't care less. Sarge, just listen, dig this, huh? Okay, now let's go. Let's go where? To the city. I want to take you to a little cafe. Didn't I just tell you I'm taking my wife to the you show? You can take her tomorrow, Sarge. Now, please, listen, you got to do this. It's important. You're my platoon, Sarge, and you're also my friend. I can't go to nobody else. But just remember the record. Remember what you heard. And don't waste any time, huh? Come on, you got to do it, Sarge. Look, Price, what did you drag me here for? You tell me this minute or I'm walking out oh, on man. you. Your orders be uh, A couple beers. A donkey. Shh, now look, man, don't say a word. Just dig this guy. Just dig this guy. He he's playing now. Don't I get enough of this jazz when I'm in the barracks? Do I have to get into a jam with my wife and come to a joint like this in my night out? You know who that is? That's Heinrich Hoffman, the cat on the record. Well, that's nice. I hope you and Heinrich are very happy. Now, what did you drag me in here I for? want you to dig him for a while. Price, as you would say, I don't dig this. I got news for you. I don't want to dig it. Oh, this man. kind of music sounds to me like a bunch of monkeys running loose in a boiler factory. If that makes me a square, good. I'm a happy, satisfied, contented square. Sarge, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Losing what? The ear. The ear is going on me. I can't hear anymore. I hear the wrong scenes, man. I'm listening to a cat named Heinrich Hoffman that don't play like him. Listen, you, you heard him on the record back in the day room. Does it sound the same? Come on, break it to me, does it? What am I hearing, Sarge? In just about 10 seconds, you're going to hear a whole earful from me. Do you realize I was supposed to take Man, my wife... Man, do you realize a human being is right now at the long, bitter end? I've lost it. I've lost my ear, Sarge. He plays like a different guy, Sarge. I was born with a gift. 
Now it's gone. Now what's going to happen to me? Am I going to spend the rest of my life living like a square? Ah, uh, where's that waitress? Now, Price, you don't drink, so don't try getting a load on it. Forget your troubles. It'll only make you sick. Who wants to drink? Hey, uh, whatever your name is. Uh, my name is Erika. Oh, that's nice. Would you ask the piano player to come over here as soon as he can? Herr Hoffman? Yeah, yeah, Herr Hoffman. Tell him a fan of his from America would like to buy him a beer. A fan? Yeah. I am afraid I do not understand. Is not a fan in English something one uses to keep cool? Yeah, yeah, honey. I'm the coolest fan he's got. Just tell that cat that I want to buy him a cat. beer. Cat? I am afraid now, I Look, do I not... didn't come over here to give English lessons. Hop on your cloud and float over to the bandstand, huh, honey? You know, you know, Sarge, this, this isn't a bad country in some ways, but it's so square. My boy, I only know Gregory Peck is at the movies tonight, and if I don't take my wife... Good evening. Oh, Mr. Huffman, won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Alvin Price. This is Sergeant Stewart. How do you do? I I'm a fan of yours, Mr. Hoffman. I really dig your style. Well, you know how, how bad those old records are? Today they have much finer recording oh, techniques. It ain't the sound. It ain't the sound. It's the style. Y you don't cut the same left hand figures. And the beat, it just sounds as though it's off. I believe I play as I always did. Yeah, sure. Well, it's me. Uh, have a beer? No, Dunk, I, I must be getting back to the bandstand. It's been a pleasure to meeting you, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Now, my boy, I say good night. You coming? No, Sarge, I can't. I got to sit here. I got to dig more of this. Maybe my ear will come back. I just got to sit here and dig it. Look, buddy, you got an early reveille tomorrow. We're going out on a problem. Price, are you listening Sarge, to me? Sarge, please get that voice out of my ears. I can only handle one sound at a time. Good night, Alvin. My wife and I can still make the last feature. I knew then what I know now, I would never have walked out on him. But that's how it goes. Anyhow, I took my wife to the movies, which got me off the hook domestically. Then we come to the following morning, or I should say, the gray chill of dawn. Surely, Sergeant Stewart, you must agree that being AWOL is a serious offense. Yes, sir. I don't believe Price deliberately did it. But the fact remains, he isn't here. I'm afraid he's sick, sir. Well, in the light of what you told me, it did sound as though he was very much overwrought about something. I would say it was more than that, sir. Seemed like the whole world came to an end for him last night. Well, it's true, the most important thing is his record collection, and that's here in the company. So why should he leave it? That is what's bothering me, sir. I can sympathize with him, Stuart. But I'm faced with the fact that I have to account for him in our records. I know, sir. When I believe he's in trouble, I think he needs help. I've come here to ask permission to go look for him. You've got it, Stuart. Thank you, sir. Funny, isn't it, Captain? The guy can go off his rocker for so many reasons. I'll bet this is the first time a man ever went AWOL because he couldn't hear a piano player. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production of The Coolest Cat. Young men and women, now is the time to consider the Army's Reserve for You training program. Here's how it works. You check the school catalog listing the technical courses available. There are more than 150 to choose from. Select two and file an application. If you're accepted, you'll receive a written guarantee from the Adjutant General of the Army or the Commanding General of the Training Division concerned. Then, the decision is up to you. If you're interested, you enlist and are enrolled in the course of your choice. If you change your mind, the reservation is forgotten. All this can be yours. You will have the written guarantee in your hands before you enlist. There are no hidden catches. For complete information, visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Now, for the second act curtain of the proudly we hail production of The Coolest Cat. One thing about the Army, you meet such interesting people. And you'd have to go a long way before you met anyone quite like Private Alvin Price. Price is stationed in Germany with a weapons company. Uh, that is, he was stationed with a weapons company. As of right now, there's considerable doubt about Price. 
he disappeared. The last person to see him in the outfit was platoon sergeant George Stewart. Price had dragged Stewart to a small cafe to listen to a jazz piano player. Stewart left early and Price never did come back to the company. Tonight, Stewart has gone back to the cafe. Perhaps he can find someone who might know something about Price. Your order, Bitty? Oh, look, uh, you remember me? Uh, no. I was in here last night with another soldier. So many soldiers come here. Look, even now, you see? Yeah, but this soldier asked you to bring the piano player to our table, remember? No, I, I do not think so. He was talking, well, it's kind of a way American jazz musicians talk, and you couldn't understand him too well. Now you remember, don't you? I, I, I was so busy last night, I, I remember nothing. I, your order, bitte. Bring me a beer. Well, 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 well. If it isn't old Georgie Stewart, hey, you owe me a beer. Sit down. Old hag-ridden Georgie Stewart. Man, we miss you since you left the world of sane people and got married. Hey, what you doing out tonight? How come you got away from your wife? I haven't seen you for over a year. Remember me, old buddy, Eddie Barnes? That's right. I haven't seen you since you transferred into the MP. Yeah, man, I'm in a good outfit now. But here we go, like two old soldiers, all we do is talk shop, shop, shop. Uh, what's long face about? Well, I'm not exactly off duty right now. You mean you're on duty here in a beer joint? Hey, why didn't they have details like this when I was in the infantry? I got a man AWOL in the platoon. Yeah? Well, I guess my outfit will be out after him in a couple days. I'm here because I'm trying to beat your outfit to the draw. I want to bring him in myself if I can find him. Hey, look. Maybe you can give me a hand. Hey, Georgie, buddy, this happens to be my night off. Anyway, you can listen. Maybe you can give me a slant. This guy's name is Alvin Price. Your beer, Sergeant. Bring another one, please. Yeah, I, I go. He's a smart kid, and he's got this fantastic hobby. He's a nut on jazz. August, another beer, bitte. Here come. Oh, uh, yeah, Herr Hoffman? Come with me, please. But uh, I am busy. I said, come with me, please. Yeah. Now, that sergeant, he was in here last night with the soldier Price. He is obviously wondering what has become of his friend. I saw him talking with you. I wonder what you told him. I? I, I told him nothing. I swear. <gasps> Good. Now, let this serve as a reminder to continue telling him nothing. I, I would say nothing. I... I told you I do not wish to be involved. You cannot afford to be involved. Your father is still very much in our hands. Now, soldiers do disappear. His absence will be dismissed after a while. No one will connect it with this place. But what are you going to do with him? Is it any affair of yours? Go about your duties. Yeah. Yeah, Herr Hoffman. <laughs> So I left him, and that was the last I've seen or heard of him. Okay, so the first thing you do is ask around, did anybody notice him last night? Uh, that waitress, uh, let's call her over and ask her. I already did, she doesn't even remember seeing him in here last night. And now wait a minute, that's impossible. She'd have to remember him after what you just told me. Well, you want to call her over and ask her? No, no I don't, not now. You asked anybody else? Not yet. Don't. What do you mean, don't? What did I come here for? That girl is lying. She has to be. Drop the whole thing. What are you talking about? Don't mention the word price in here again, huh? Just listen and shut up. Yeah, but... You just told me a story, and all you can draw from it is one conclusion, that the guy figured he was losing his gift and wandered off somewhere off his rocker. There's another way of looking at it, too. I wish you'd tell me. All right. Suppose he was right. Suppose his ear was telling him the truth. Maybe this piano player didn't sound like Hoffman for a very good reason. What reason? Best reason in the world. This piano player isn't Heinrich Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's true, we got all kinds of interesting possibilities. Why does this guy claim he's Hoffman? Who is this guy? I ain't concerned with him. I have to be worried about Price. Yeah, 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 and I have to be worried about both of them. Georgie? Looks like I don't have a night off after all. I have to go back to the office. The whole routine's got to get started. You better go back to your outfit. But I can't... I know, but it's out of your hands now. Look, Georgie, we're an army of specialists. There are people who are trained for this kind of thing. 
Now, if you start poking around, you can loss up everything. But I... I can't just sit around doing nothing. You won't be doing nothing. You'll be doing what the Army trained you for. And so will I. Now, look, I don't mess around with your job, so don't you fool around with mine. Okay, get up, yawn, stretch, say good night, and beat it. Get up. Huh? Uh, well, I'll have to get up. It's still dark out. What's the matter? You have a phone call. Uh, from the outfit? Who is it? The first sergeant? What's up? It's a girl. Girl? What girl? I don't know any girls. Oh, you know this one, darling. Very interesting. A girl calls at three in the morning. I, it's a gag. You know the guys in the outfit. Anything for a laugh. <sighs> Hello. What's the big idea? You, you are the sergeant who is the friend of, of Price. Uh, I am Erica, the girl in the cafe. Erica? Oh, her name is Erica. <laughs> Well, Erica, what do you want? I, I must talk with you. Can I see you? It is very important. It cannot wait. Your, your friend is in trouble. Where is he? I cannot talk longer. Meet me in front of the cafe. Please, hurry. Honey, I gotta go out. You're not going anywhere, sweetheart. The nerve of that girl. Honey, I can explain everything later. Now, what you have to do is call the military police, ask for Sergeant Barnes. Barnes, huh? Another old bachelor buddy. The two of you make a great Honey, pair. listen. Tell Barnes to leave a message for him. He's gotta be reached. Why? Has Erica got a girlfriend for him? No. Am I crazy? Of all the nerve, what do you think you're doing? Tell Barnes Erica wants to talk. Tell him I'm meeting her in front of the cafe. Price is in a jam. <laughs> Baby, I'll explain when I get back. I'll be waiting up for you. Let me in quickly. Before I am seen, drive away. What? Hurry. I do not care. I will not see murder. They will kill him. I know it now. What are you talking about? Have you got a pistol? Who carries a gun off duty? Hoffman will kill him tonight. He said so. He just left the cafe. Drive quick. We must get there first. I better call the MPs. We will be too late if you stop for an instant. Oh, please hurry. Uh, down this street. It is short. It is shorter. What are you talking about? I cannot save my father this way. Perhaps he is even no longer alive. How do I know? Besides, now I know so much. Too much. The way Hoffman looked at me tonight. Perhaps he will kill me, too. Who is this guy, Hoffman? He is not Hoffman. Hoffman died in prison five years ago. This is Kellner. He is a red spy. Oh, now, now, it figures. Uh, yeah, and last night, your friend, he sat in the cafe, just listening till, till everyone had gone. We were alone, Hoffman at the piano. I was sweeping the floor. He was sitting at his table. Finally, he walked up to Hoffman and said, Buddy, what are you building? You are not Hoffman. My ear is okay. You are not Hoffman. Who are you and what is your racket? And Hoffman hit him. Your friend fell to the floor. Hoffman took him to his house. All day, all night, at every chance, he keeps asking, how did you know? What did I do that told you I was not Hoffman? Tell me how Hoffman... Your friend will not, your friend will not talk. Now I know Hoffman will kill him. Price alone in the house? Yeah. Okay, let's hope we get there first. <laughs> Alvin! Alvin! Hey, wait a minute, kid. I'll get that gag out of your mouth. Here, let me untie you. Phew. Man, how'd you get here? It's a long story. I went around the back and broke a window. Let's move fast, Alvin. A guy with a gun's gonna be here any minute. I can leave her. Yes, you know. Now, put up your hands, all of you. And so, Erica, you made this your concern. Well, too bad. First, Price, I will attend to you. Evidently, you are the only jazz expert who has ever heard of Heinrich Hoffmann. Well, you won't be of much trouble. Kurt Gregor, come in here. Tie him up. We shall go for a small trip. It's remarkable how the best laid plans have always a small defect. For years, I have studied jazz to impersonate Hoffmann, a man who had never been in Germany. And a soldier from America comes by to create nuisance. Unfortunately, that defect can be taken care of. The three of you, march. Hit the ground, fellas! Tommy, Gordon, around the back. Grab those two. Barnes, where'd you come from? Jerry, what about Hoffman? I think he's had it, Sarge. 
Report to the lieutenant. Tell him we found our AWOL. You okay, George? Yeah, yeah. Did you get my message? What message? We were following Hoffman. That's all. We got you here. I saw your car parked outside. We come in, and how do you do? Hey, Sarge, there's a cat on the ground. He's through. Yeah, I cannot feel sorry for him. Hey, Barnes, this girl took a big chance by talking to me. Don't worry, sister. We'll see you be okay. Sarge, the ear. The old ear. I still got it. Hey, Sarge, you know what happened. I wasn't AWOL. This guy slugged me. Nothing's gonna happen. Wouldn't be surprised if you wind up being a hero. <laughs> Yeah, as you would say, uh, you're going to be the coolest cat in the outfit. Uh, no one has told me. What is a cat? Oh, yeah, well, you see... Price and I both got commendations out of it. This guy, Kellner, who'd been masquerading his up and got a quiet funeral. He got what he deserved. He was a spy and a murderer. Isn't Price the limit? Price only had one thing against him. At the price, this was the most important thing of all. Sarge, the worst thing you can say about that square is that he was the ickiest piano player I ever heard. Here's a special message to the high school class of 56. Fellas, the United States Army is now offering you an outstanding opportunity to get free, highly specialized training through its Reserved for You training program. Here's how it works. You visit your local Army recruiting station and make your choice from over 150 fascinating training courses. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you will receive a letter of acceptance guaranteeing you a place in the course of your choice before you enlist. Then you're all set. Through the Reserved for You program, you not only get the finest training in the world, but you will have an excellent opportunity for a satisfying career. So at your first chance, get all the facts about the wonderful advantages of an Army career. Visit your local Army recruiting station and ask about the Reserved for You training program. another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>